Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good to us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Amen. Everybody with your Bible. Bible is. Repeating after me in good voice, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you that it will transform our life, put us in a different place. We rebuke the enemy and anything that he wants to launch in this time. We thank you that our hearing will be clear and our understanding will be clear. We thank you that we'll move out in powerful ways. And we thank you, God, for the victory we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so today we take dominion authority over everything that is like you and, and, and everything that is unlike you. And we believe you for your word today. And we declare it sovereignly in this house over and over and over again. And we thank you, God. Again, we thank you, God that we can claim the victor's crown over and over again we are more than conquerors we do have the victory through jesus christ our lord amen and thank god put your hands together and give god a good day. hallelujah 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 I'm going to talk from the, the, the title today. We have the family name. We have the family name. We have the family, the family name. And let me open with a little background information, but it's going to chase a previous sermon we did on Jesus. I think it was week before last. One of Jesus' purposes was to empower the believer with authority over the enemy. Our story takes place just after the scene where Jesus had been invited to teach in the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown, on the Sabbath day. He asked for the scrolls of the word of God and read a passage that was previously prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, which is recorded in Luke 4.18. Now, I'm not cover his whole resume, but just this one line. And Luke 4.18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. He has anointed me to preach preach. We know the anger that the people had. He was all right. He was a good teacher. He was great until he said that. And, and then he said, and today this hearing is fulfilled. This, this saying is fulfilled in your hearing. And he sat down. They were enraged with him. Because they had just thought this is only Joseph's boy. He can't be the one we're looking for and waiting for. The question is, where was Jesus anointed? Where was he anointed? In Luke 4 and 1, and you don't have to turn there, just jot it down. We find Jesus was filled with the Spirit at his baptism in the Jordan. That's when God spoke from heaven and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And it was emblematic and, and, and symbolic of the fact that Jesus in the earth had to be filled full of the Holy Ghost. 
He had to be filled. He was anointed with power and authority then. Then he was anointed to go to the wilderness to be tempted. Wow, wow. It, so I'm going to tell you today, it takes an anointing to handle the wilderness stuff. <laughs> Jesus just didn't run up into the wilderness to be tempted, although he was on assignment to go there for 40 days. But he was anointed to be there. So he could do what he needed to do and come out with the authority he needed to come. So he was anointed to go to the wilderness. And we try to do a lot of stuff without the anointing of Jesus. Just because we like to do it. Just because we want to do it. And Luke 14, we get this statement. I need to say it again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He wasn't self-anointed. And any anointing that's active today in the body of Christ, you are not anointed. You are anointed with the anointing of Jesus. And we mess folk up telling them that they are anointed. Jesus acknowledges and announces his authority through the anointing. The anointing for testing and temptation to go into the wilderness gave him authority over the devil because he passed the test. Remember that because we're going to hit that again. After the scene in Nazareth, we find Jesus again returning back to Capernaum on the Sabbath day. He always messed with them on their Sabbath day, on their holy day. Always at church. He messed with them at church. He, he still messes with them at church. <laughs> and here becomes this reading that is the principal text for this message today. Luke 4, 31 and 37. Everything is in uh, New King James Version. Then he went down meaning Jesus went down to, to Capernaum, and I'm going to read with emphasis. I'm going to add some stuff. You know how I do that. A city of Galilee and was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching. They were amazed at how good he could teach until they got to some question. But they were amazed at his teaching. But anointed teaching always amazed them because it carries a different authority with it. Now, in the synagogue, there was a man. He was in church. <laughs> Come on, look at somebody and say, he was in church. He was in church. <laughs> now, in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. Where was he at? Church. Where was the demon? The church. With the man. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Now, this wasn't the demon talking. The demon utilized the voice of the man. Because demons are illegal in the earth. They do not have an earth suit. So every time they operate, they operate through a person. The man was in church. His voice was in church. His mouth was in church. So the devil used his voice to talk to Jesus. Jesus, let us alone. And then, I, and you know, people like to, like to chronicle where you're from. Jesus of Nazareth. We know where you're from. Let us alone. The devil still uses voice box. And then he went on. Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are. The Holy One of God. The, the devil know who Jesus is. 
That's why it's good for you to know who Jesus is. Why don't you know who Jesus is? If the devil knows who he is, and he knows he's just not anyone, he's the holy one of God. He stopped short of saying, you are God. Because at one time, he was in, in heaven with him. I know who you are. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet. And come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in the midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. It, it, I like this because the demon got mad when it was time to leave. And many times when you are under attack, the greatest attack happens at the exit of the devil. He said, I'm going I'm, 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 I'm going to I'm hit you one last time. And he threw him down. But that's all right. Hit the flow, but you got to go. <laughs> I'm on the flow, but I'm free. I'm on the flow, but I'm delivered. I'm, I, I can get back up, but you just lost your home. Come, come on. Are, are y'all out there? Because sometimes that's where you hit is the flow. That's all right if you get clean. Because cause getting delivered hurts sometimes. <laughs> it's painful. It's not easy. <laughs> because they've been using your mouth, you may end up with a sore throat. <laughs> My God. And they come out. And they come out. And they come out. There's a whole group of them. And they come out. But, but the chief one is the one that talks. Jesus, I know who you are. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. Jesus pursued his primary calling as a teacher. Taking advantage of the courtesy of the synagogue. We are not told what Jesus taught, but we are told the effect of the teaching. They were astonished. They had never heard anyone teach quite like this before. Now, mind you, this was a people who had not only been exposed to rabbis, but they had been exposed to the next rank of rabbis, rabbans who knew the letter of the law without reading it. They could quote it verbatim. The authority of Jesus was not evident as he taught, but also in his life. This would be demonstrated in the encounter with the demon-possessed man. The demons got mad at him because they knew he was anointed and empowered against them to win. See, you're anointed for a reason. You're not just anointed to say, I'm oily. Hey, to huck and kick and jump and bump. That's not the anointing. That's the residual of having the anointing. But you're anointed to win. Because Jesus was a winner. Everywhere he went, he won. That's because he won the initial battle. And maybe we lost some battles, but I'm telling you, you can get on the winning side. Come on. How many of you want to win? Turn to somebody and say, I'm anointed to win. There is no anointing in losing. Ain't no anointing in losing. I'll never forget, we were in, in one of Luke's high school classes after, after a game, and, and one of the little fellows was playing football, basketball, and, and, and they said, uh, uh, the little guy, brilliant little fella, he, just, he, he was tore up about the game. And, and, and as most athletes, they hate to lose. They, they try to play it off, shake your hands, stuff, but they'd rather knock your head off. You know, they, they, because they want to win. And this little fella, they came up to him and said, you played a good, a good, good game. You played a good game. You played a good game. And they thought they had said something to him. He turned to him and said, I didn't win. <laughs> the 
The goal, when, you, when they hit the court, the goal is not to play a good game. And that's how Christians, I'm going to be a good Christian, but I don't have to win nothing. I don't need to have a victory over nothing. Y'all out there? The term unclean spirit and evil spirit and demons all seem to be the same. Referring to evil powers of darkness who are the enemies of God and man. These powers are organized. Satan is not omnipresent. He's well organized. Everybody say well organized. organized. Now this man had a bunch of demons in him, but the leader only spoke. Used the man's voice. So they organized. They take orders from other demons. Demons are organized. And we don't want no organization. <laughs> and, and, and no order. <laughs> but the demons are organized. Oh, you don't believe me. Run to Ephesians 6 and 12. Because you're so disorganized, you're wrestling with the wrong thing. With each other. And that's not who you're supposed to be wrestling with. And then it said that, for we do not wrestle against flesh. And what? But against what? Here, here comes the organization of the kingdom of darkness. Principality against powers, that's the next rank. Against the rulers of the darkness, that's the next rank. Of this age, not, we're not talking about a future devil, we're talking about a now devil. Against spiritual hosts, next level, of wickedness in heavenly places. That means above the sky. So when you get in the plane, you ought to be play, praying because there is a host assigned to the skies. Oh, God. They fly through the air with the greatest of ease. <laughs> Those planes that went down. We might want to say it was the computer, but it was the prince of the air. So I don't get on any plane, first of all, without sitting on the window where the wing is. <laughs> because you said you would give your angels charge over me, I want to see something flapping a wing sometime. Am I telling the truth, Pastor? Don't I? Okay. She don't want me to sit. Sit on the aisle this time. And I'll get some evil person to keep closing the shutter. And I give <laughs> You can't see nothing, Yak. I'm looking anyway. This well-organized host of demons is led by Satan himself. The demons knew who Jesus was, but the chosen people did not. The ones he was sent to save didn't know. He, 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 all through the book that Jesus read out, it talked about it. Genesis, Moses. David, Isaiah, Ezekiel. All of them talked about him, but, but when he showed up, the people who he had come to save didn't know. And sometimes you don't know when salvation is with you. Oh, pay attention. When you deny Jesus, you deny yourself access to his authority. It's not an option to not know Jesus. It should be for your life. It should be for all of our lives. And anointing Jesus. Jesus is the anointed one and we operate in his anointing. If I don't leave with anything else, I want you to understand the anointing that you operate in his anointing. You are just a vessel. 
to operate in his anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Anybody getting blessed yet? Yeah. Isaiah 10, 27. And it said, now this is Isaiah prophesying about what the Jews refused to receive. He said, it shall come to pass in that day, meaning a specific calendar time, that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will not only be taken from your neck, it will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Because of the anointing oil. Because of the one that's coming that is anointed. Not only is he going to take the yoke and cast it down, but he's literally going to take something or either step all over and crush it into pieces. So you can't be burdened with it again. Come on, come on, come on. When did this happen? It happened when Jesus appeared as the anointed one of God. The demons asked, did you come to destroy us? I can see a bubble over Jesus' head saying, why, yeah. <laughs> why, yes, I came to destroy you. What did you think I came to play? And when you play with the devil, you don't win. You won't win. He's smarter. You need help. Tell somebody, say, you need help. <laughs> and Jesus is the only one. He's smarter, he's slick, he, he fools the very elect of Christ. Yes. Come on, come on. And you stand there thinking, oh, I, I can handle that. Yeah. You lost your mind. You can't handle it. How many know I'm right? I'm standing there, I know it's, it's right. The demons asked, again, did you come to destroy us? God would spell, when, 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 when the demons knew that Jesus had come to destroy them, it, it upset them because they knew that, that, that what they had attempted in the wilderness had failed. And because it failed, he was authorized and had been authenticated to come against them because he already had a win in the win column. He could fight from the position of a winner. Did you hear me? And because of that, that's why the devil said, you came to destroy us. Because he was authorized to whoop up on them. Anybody that beats you, you don't play with. Amen. Oh, they can fight hard. <laughs> I'm going to try to get a lick in if I had to run, but they can fight hard. Come on. Are y'all out there? <laughs> but Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of here. He had no conversation with him. Oh, let, me, let me work on that a minute. Y'all trying to philosophize against him and talk about it and, and, and talk your way out of it, really trying to convince yourself of what you're saying is all right, but you're just as out of it as you can be. There is no conversation. Just take care of business. Get out. Y'all keep trying to make them do right. <laughs> this ain't an Aretha Franklin song. Do right, won't. Get out. What he ultimately know is that the days of the kingdom of darkness are numbered. And so 
here comes the question of our respect. In the days of Kiana. Say Kiana. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The demon himself testified Jesus was the Holy One, holy and pure. Big deal. The demons admitted that their wickedness uh, 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 had, had failed, but then Jesus rebuked them by saying, be quiet. The manner of Jesus' dealing with the demons in this passage is a clear demonstration of his power. And, and, and when the demon told him who he was, he did not need the demon to stroke his ego. You know you're the holy one of God. And I know who I am. I know who I am. And you must know who you are in the Lord. Because nobody can come and tell you something different about what God said. About you. Anybody in this room has God said something about you? <laughs> he said something about you. He said something to you. He said something on you. And then it says, and when the demon had thrown him in, the, in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. I want y'all to remember that. It did not hurt him. You're going to get free and you won't be hurt. You're going to get free. And it won't hurt. God wants you to have a clean breast. I like the word of God. I want you to have a clean breast. Well, well, how does that affect us, Pastor? Here comes the transfer. Everybody say the transfer. Yeah. Jesus was anointed to operate authority with authority and power in the earth, and you must operate in the anointing of Jesus in this earth. Jesus was anointed in the earth to do earth stuff. He doesn't need an earth anointing in heaven. Because heaven, everything is wind. He don't need an anointing in heaven. Because everybody there is wind. And when you turn to a loser, you get kicked out. <laughs> everything is wind. <laughs> come on, come on. It's a winning situation. That's why you, you, we, we have to live so we can get to a total win. Heaven is a win. Are y'all there? Say that with me. Heaven is a win. And I don't mean W-I-N-D. I'm talking about W-I-N. It's a win. How did he do it? The transfer of his authority to you. How? Number one, spiritual impartation. Before Jesus was crucified, died, and was resurrected, he did an authority test run on the disciples. He did some, some advanced training for the battle and the warfare that they would have to come encounter, in, encounter after he was gone. So he did some advanced training with them. Come on, come on. He's a good teacher, good trainer. He's a good militia man. He's a good war general. John 20, 21 through 23. Say, Chris, look at my baby back there. <laughs> That's baby for amen, amen, amen. <laughs> John 20, 21 and 23, you got it? So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Get this. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So that means I, I am blowing the Holy Spirit in you. 
for a test run. Because over in Acts, he told them to wait till you be endued with power. But we see wind here, W-I-N-D, and we see wind over in Acts. So he said, I'm getting you ready for what you can operate in today and what you're getting ready to get tomorrow. So he blew the Holy Spirit in them. So that they can do a test run. He showed them what they would be able to do as the church in his physical absence. Then after his resurrection from the dead, Jesus did not immediately go back. He wasn't scared. As soon as he got up, he didn't disappear. He hung out for a long time, showing himself to a group eating fish by the sea, talking with a couple of them on the Emmaus Road, just, just hanging out, you know. Yeah, he, he, he didn't run. He wasn't scared. You couldn't crucify him again. Because <laughs> he had got up the first time. That's a win. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it, it, it's not really double jeopardy. It's just a win. Are, are you out there? Well, Luke 10, 1 and 2, and then 17 through 19 shows us what Jesus did after his resurrection. Now, the first group was his disciples. But this is, this, we're going to read something else in here. Verse 1 and 2 says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. Others. Not that original 11, you know, one had defected. He was a non-winner. He defected. The money got to him. <laughs> Seventy others also. Just so you won't think that was just to the disciples. Guess who one of the others are? two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. This is the resurrection Jesus. He sent those 70 others which made 35 pairs into every place that he was about to go. It was the pre-ministry ministry. I'm sending some people that's going to operate like me before I get there. So you won't be in shock when I show up doing my thing too. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You're going to say, oh, they do the same thing. <laughs> people getting free, delivered and everything. Uh, do y'all see that in here? Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. They still few. The harvest is still great. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into the harvest. That's still his prayer today. And then verse 17 and 19. 17 and 19. Here is the result. I like the Bible because it shows you before and after, and here's the result. Then the 70 returned with what? Joy. Saying, Lord, even the demons. Come on, come on. He said, he, they, they was excited. This stuff works, man. Your, your name got some stuff in it. Remember, he said, they are subject to us at the authority of yours in the anointing of yours. Come on, come on. That's when you, you, you run up somewhere and say, I'm Lucille. And you get the hell knock out of you. I 
got your eyes get black. Oh, I know. <laughs> you, you went in the wrong name. That's a name, black eye. <laughs> Number two, in as far as impartation, and this last verse centers right there, the use of the name. Jesus, just before he ascended to be seated at the right hand of the Father, Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, 19, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, some authority has been given to me. He said, all authority. has been given to me in where? Yes. And. Oh, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let me stop there. He didn't say baptize them in the, in the title. In the name of the Father and the name. I'm confused. I don't know when we got confused about it. Because the authority is in the name. And if the world can get you to stop using the name. By using a title. They should cast out demons. And, and, and in my name you'll speak with new tongues. You'll be Holy Ghost speaking. I know three languages. Detroit English, <laughs> Ebonics, <laughs> and how to speak in tongues. I thought I knew Swahili when I left college. <laughs> in my name. In the name of Jesus, he authorizes us. He gave us his name as the authority. The power is in the name. The authority is in the name. The anointing is with the name. He gave the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. And every tongue must confess to one fact that you are Lord, you're the winner to the glory of God. Where does it have authority on earth and in heaven and it has it in hell? That's why after he died, he went and shook up hell for three days. 
He could only be there three days because the scripture had said we, he would not allow his holy one to see corruption. And many times the body broke down on the fourth day. So three days was more than enough for him to shake up hell. And he went down there as a winner, liberating souls. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lifting people up out that had long been dead. That's why when he was resurrected, they saw folk walking around in Jerusalem that had been dead for years. It, it, it was the day of the living dead. Are, are y'all out there? We have the family name. You got it. I heard Rand say, it's something about the name. <laughs> something about the name. It is the sweetest name. Whatever he said. to call his name. I love to call his name because it's the sweetest name. Come on, give him a praise in this house. Come on, give him a praise in the house. You have the family's name to you. It'll set you free today. Blessings to you today. Jesus. Blessings to you today. Father, we love you today. Come on, lift up them hands and worship Jesus all over this room. Oh, his presence is here right now. Hallelujah, you got the name today. Use it, use it. And if you don't know it, you can get it today. Because he loves you today. Are you glad you got Jesus today? While we're praying, we're believing for somebody's life in Jesus' name. My God. If you're here today and you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's available to you today. You can have the family's name. And I don't care what they call us. We're named by the name Jesus. That's the family name. Whew. The devil knows. But you got to own it. And if you're here today and you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord. If you have, I'm not talking to you. But I'm talking to somebody that needs to make a decision today. Look this way. Look this way. Look this way. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Let me just put it to you. You can receive him today. He loves you. Here, here. He loves you today. If that's you and you want to give your life to the Lord, just slip up a hand right where you are. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. He's just going to pray with you. If that's you, just come up in here and say, I want to be saved today. Girl, you came with. This is for real today. God loves you. And before he left to go be with his daddy in heaven, he left something with you to battle with. He left something to help you win. It's available to you today. Just slip up a hand and say, I want to be saved. next call is this. 
be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's available to you. And the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place on one accord. And the Holy Spirit came in as a rushing mighty wind. And it sat on them and then it went in them. I talked about the wind in this passage and in this teaching. But then, then it showed up to empower the church with the authority of Jesus' anointing. Hallelujah. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can be filled. If you're in this room and you're not filled and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm talking to you. Look this way. Look this way. Don't be distracted. You want to be filled. Just put up a hand. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It can happen this way. Let me be clear. There won't be anybody else speaking out of you. It'll be your voice as the Holy Spirit is prompting you. You need to demythify some. Third call is to be come back to the Lord and come back to the house of God. You've been away for a while. You've been out. Or you're just unchurched for right now. Between churches, we welcome you here to teach the word plainly, clarity, trust in God over your life. If that's you and you want to respond to that call and become a part of this house, stop running. Hit someone. Is that you? Slip up a hand. Look this way. Look at me. I'm talking to you. Amen. Amen. How many bless God for being here today? Hallelujah. Shake the hand of somebody next to you. Look at him and tell him. Do you know you're a winner? <laughs> what do, uh, Jan, why did you hold Dora? Hold <laughs> here? We thank God for you. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord another great day. Come on, come on, give him a good praise. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. God is good to us. God is good. I love the way you love each other too. I do. I mess with you, but I love the way you love. Carolyn, I love you. I mess with you so much. I really do. I really do. I don't know about Lou, but I love you. You know. Amen. Good to see you, daughter Madeline. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Even Valerie, I love her too. She knew I was going to say something. She kept staring at me. See, that's how you do, you know. If you don't want to be called on by the teacher in the class, you look away. You <laughs> how many of you love the Lord today, for real? Let's prepare to give our gifts for this service. King's domain. Kingdom means the king's domain. I want to be up under the king's domain.